Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Teo Studio and today I'm here to share with you my mission inspiration from Mike Deacon's Facebook group. This is his challenge. I'm going to show you my mixed media art journal page that I made using his prompts. So there are eight prompts plus there is three color combination suggested and then there are some um, words to inspire you. The word that I picked is grow. So I was like kind of thinking about things growing and waking up and and personal growth and and um, all that entails so that was kind of my inspiration but the bigger inspiration that I had on this page that as you will see as it goes through is the first two prompts were about adding texture and so I just kind of carried that whole theme of adding texture to your piece all the way through so the first step was to glue down paper or fabric fabric fragments for texture. So I started out with this uh, burlap um, that is from Canvas Corp Brands. They have a lot of canvas and burlap and things like that. A lot of uh, really textury types of pro products to use in your scrapbooking and art journaling. So <clears throat> then I went and I got a piece of their canvas. They also have canvas, obviously. Canvas Corp is going to have canvas, right? Uh, they have a, a product line called uh, Canvas Home Basics where you can get a lot of things that um, like pillow, uh, pillow forms that you can decorate and uh, things made out of burlap canvas, uh, you know, obviously stretched canvas on a frame if you're going to do art, all that type of stuff. So I picked a piece of their plain canvas and cut a piece of that as well. And then I also used a piece of their, they call it flute paper. I call it corrugated paper, but it's uh, basically bumpy like cardboard, like the inside of a piece of cardboard it has, um, theirs has fine, fine bumps, fine texture to it rather than the more thicker stuff that you would get on a cardboard box or something. But it's kind of the same stuff. So I cut all those out and into the shapes that I wanted and then I glued them down using the Liquitex gel medium. Um, that's the thicker pasty type of a matte medium. Step two was to add texture paste and the stencil, stencil was optional. I choose to use this uh, handmade stencil. I cut this out of, uh, um, what's that stuff called? The plastic that goes in between in inside of a binder like page dividers inside of a binder made out of plastic um, I hand cut this with a uh, exacto knife at some point I wanted rays which is what I'm using it for but um, after I was done with this project I just tossed it in the trash because it it was more trouble than it was worth <laughs> to have this hand cut stencil if I want a ray stencil there are plenty of them available on the market and I'll probably just order one at some point um, obviously they haven't used it very many times though so I don't know if I really need it but I did for this project I needed sun rays and so I'm using the light molding paste from golden which is a quick drying texture paste um, different texture than some of the other ones. It's not sandable or carvable. It's kind of a a lightweight product, but it works great for art journaling because I don't like to sit around and wait for things to dry. So this dries quickly and especially if I use my heat tool on it. So that's what I used for step number two. Um, the reason I'm having so much trouble, as you can see, that I'm having trouble struggling is because the weight of that plastic, that, you know, the hand cut stencil is not very heavy, plus one of the rays is torn, and so I keep, it keeps just, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a good idea, but I will get a real one that has a heavier weight of plastic at some point if I really need it. Um, one thing that I did do was, um, I didn't like the way the rays ended in a rectangle like you know just just ended so I ended up going with the palette knife and smoothing the ends off so that it kind of bl they blended out into the page and then I also dipped my finger in water and well first I tried a 
baby wipe to kind of smooth everything and that was kind of taking too much of it off so I dipped my finger in water and used my wet finger to smooth out things because some of those have already started to dry um, because I had to do it in sections some of them are already kind of dry so anyway it worked out the way I wanted it I just um, it wasn't as smooth as you sometimes see when people are putting texture paste through a stencil and it's just so easy. This was like, you know, cleaning up and you know, yeah, whatever. Number three was to cover with a thin coat of paint or gesso. I just decided to, to, to put gesso over the whole thing because I hadn't sealed the paper. This is a 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper in a spiral journal. This is from Strathmore. Um, I will list this journal which I really like. This is a good heavy paper for art journaling. I will list it below um, with a link to where you can buy it on Amazon as well as all the other products that I use. Those will be listed below the video. If you need them, please use my links because that helps out my channel a lot. So I kind of watered down the gesso a little bit and um, just put it all over everything, just completely sealed in. I, did, I only did one coat though, um, I could have done more coats and made the entire thing white, you know, because you can still see the craft color of the flute paper and the craft color of the burlap coming through. So the next step was to add a focal image, and this is where I said to myself, you know what, this whole page is about adding texture. I've added burlap, I've added canvas, I've added flute paper, I've added texture paper. I need to add even more texture. So I decided to make my focal image a tree. You know, I love trees. I draw trees a lot on a lot of my things. And I decided to make it a very, very textury tree. I wanted to make bumpy bark on it. And so I kind of drew the outline of where I wanted the branches and the trunk to go with the pencil. And I'm struggling a little bit with it. <laughs> um, not sure what happened with those upper branches, but somehow I got them too close together and then I had to erase and everything so I finally settled on my shape and then I started to add masking tape this is just plain cheap masking tape from the dollar store I use it for all kinds of stuff I use it to save the spiral on my on my journal you know because if you don't cover it you get paint all over it and eventually it's so crusty with paint that it's hard to turn the pages so I always cover my spiral up with uh, some masking tape before I even start and then I put deli paper in between the pages so that I don't get other stuff on the the rest of the pages that are already completed this journal only has about six pages left so I'm not sure if I'll be making it all the way to the end of the year with this journal or not I have to count but I've been doing all my mission inspiration and my pick a stick challenge challenges in this journal this year Pick a stick challenge is my challenge along with my friend Peg and my friend Sherry and uh, we offer that as a Facebook group. I'm sure you've seen it on my channel and if you have not there is a whole playlist down below there that says my pick a stick challenges and you can look at that and see um, a year and a half's worth of these type of challenges which I enjoy immensely. I think this is you, you know working around the prompts having to do the prompts in order and using all the prompts but then still being able to make something cohesive and interesting um, it's a challenge and it's something that I enjoy it pushes my creativity it makes me think outside of the box so I like that I enjoy this type of thing and I'll be continuing to do them as long as we're offering them or Mike's offering them or whoever's offering them so I enjoy it so I'm as I'm adding the the masking tape I'm wrinkling it up Remember I said I wanted to add it a lot of texture. I want this to be a very thick barky tree with lots of gnarly looking texture on it. So that's what the masking tape is doing for me. I'm kind of pushing it together. I would like I like lay lay the sticky part down and then I pinch together and lay the other sticky part down on the other side of the branch if that makes any sense it's a lot of fun this is something that everyone should try the only trouble I had was the um, the branch is not coming to a fine point because by the time you pinch up the 
the masking tape on the end to make a fine point it no longer sticks so at some point I did glue a few of the ends down with some tacky glue <clears throat> it's further on into the process I should have done it right now I should have glued everything down and made sure everything was secure but I didn't <laughs> so then I had to do it later while it was wet basically so I went ahead and covered up my masking tape with the coated gesso as well just to seal it up and uh, seal it to the page as much as I could um, thinking that that would be enough and I wouldn't need glue but I did end up needing glue on some of the tips which is fine I just should have thought of it be beforehand instead of afterhand afterhand is not a thing is it just only beforehand why isn't afterhand a thing huh, I don't know anyway so I decided I needed to colorize this and I wanted to highlight the texture because this page has so much texture on it so I decided to do my colorization with golden high flow acrylic this is a very a very loose liquidy acrylic paint and the ones that I used I picked out from the set that I have that's called the translucence so these aren't real opaque um, the colors that I picked I have different ones in there in the in the box but I have a set that's called transparence and I used that one this I believe is oh gosh I'll list the, the colors that I used below I know it's one of the transparents but I can't remember what the color is right now um, and then I I let it drip I put water spray on it to encourage it to flow even more than it already does as a high flow paint high flow meaning it flows <laughs> and um, I wanted it to look real organic and I wanted it to highlight the texture of the tape and I believe that it really did that it sunk down into the creases and crevices of the of the tape and then made those parts darker and then and then it flowed out on the top and made some parts lighter and then uh, I decided I needed the sky to be blue so I picked another one of the high flows and I applied this using a uh, number four round watercolor brush a soft you know brush to apply it exactly where I wanted it to be because I wanted it <clears throat> in between the rays and I wanted it in between the branches but I didn't want to go over the top too much because I would be darkening up that brown color <clears throat> and making kind of an olive green if you mix those two together they make kind of an olivey greeny weird color so I haven't yet dry I don't remember did I dry I think maybe I yeah I did heat dry the the uh, brown color first although I didn't get it completely dried out but I did try to dry it first <laughs> I'm impatient you know I, I use the heat tool to dry things and then I don't even like dry them all the way so once I was done applying that with a brush I didn't want it to look too perfect so I sprayed it a little bit with water just to get it to bleed out a little bit and make it look less perfect because you wouldn't want those perfect lines on the blue when you don't have perfect lines on the brown it would be incongruent so didn't do that then I got out the uh, transparent Hansa yellow um, yellows in general are transparent already so I'm not sure that this is a transparent but it's transparent trust me and I have three bottles of that so of the three sets of golden high flows that I've ordered all of them must have come with hands of yellow just a little fun fact <laughs> I don't know why I have three bottles of hands of yellow but I do and it's a very intense color then uh, this is the transparent red iron oxide and I put a little bit of that on the sunshine and let it flow highlighting that flute paper because uh, you know of course it goes down into the grooves and then I added uh, green gold to one of the hills and I let that drip and then some of the um, the iron oxide came down to you which I thought looked really cool soaking into the canvas and then to finish off the burlap I kind of wish the burlap was still its natural color and I hadn't put the white gesso over it but I went ahead and darkened it back up again using a color uh, from the deco art fluid uh, 
viridian is the color it's kind of a dark green um, that's the only one that I used that wasn't a golden high flow I didn't have a dark green in the golden high flows so I had to switch to the deco art fluid and use that uh, viridian color just to darken up that bottom part of the composition so all that was under at a focal image. <laughs> so step number five, stamp script or add hand journaling. I thought about it for a while and I decided just to put the word that inspired me from the challenge, which was grow. Um, that, that word means a lot to me. It has to do with nature. It also has to do with, you know, how you grow within your art journey, how you grow within your personal journey. Um, I'm in a transition stage right now in my life because my kid moved <laughs> uh, to go to college and that's like heartbreaking. So I need to grow past that. So that's why I just decided to stamp that on there with some stamps. <clears throat> this next step was to add washi tape or paper strips I decided to use a couple different colors of green washi tape to add some leaves to my tree and I'm cutting them out. I'm like tearing them into little pieces and then cutting out a little leaf shape. Um, unfortunately, most of that is off screen. I didn't realize I was off screen so much, so I'm sorry about that, but I sped it up to eight times fast. So uh, you can see the, the uh, leaves going on and they're kind of hard to see because they're blending into the background. The three colors were blue, yellow, and green this month. Um, I didn't set out intentionally to use the colors, but I ended up using the colors, <laughs> so it all worked out. Uh, it's kind of funny. I looked at my pa page after the fact. I'm like, oh, there's blue, there's yellow, there's green. Look at that. I used them. So... I guess this challenge is well thought because he's thinking about, you know, these words and then thinking about the colors that might match, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, well planned out. So the next step was to add, to make marks or add splatters. I just decided to make some uh, outline type marks with my Stabilo All Pencil to kind of darken up around the tree and around the leaves so that they stood out a little bit from the background because that yellow is really bright and it's kind of overtaking everything and so I wanted to add in some darkness so I used my Stabilo Owl pencil the black one which is highly water reactive and I drew around all all the shape of the tree and the leaves and then I'm using a water barrel brush to blend and activate those lines. So that's my making marks. I didn't add any splatters. Could have. I like splatters, just didn't do it. Besides, I always add splatters. Let's do something different. <laughs> if you're enjoying this video, please, please, please remember to give it a thumbs up and to leave a comment and to subscribe and turn on your notifications. My views of my videos are way, way, way down since the, the YouTube decided to make some sort of change to their algorithm. And I find it sad <laughs> that my videos are not getting viewed by as many people. So I know that you need to turn on your notification bell now um, to get notified. So that's one of the things I'm, I'm not really I don't really understand exactly what they did to make the change but it sure does affect a lot of us who are who have small channels like mine who are doing art videos because you know we're not the ones that have the million subscribers we're the small channels so it affects us a lot we see a lot bigger difference in our numbers so just to bring out the texture a little bit more I am using heavy white gesso in a dry brush um, no water on that brush. Those, those two leaves keep coming off and I have to end up gluing them down. It's kind of funny. They wouldn't, they kept coming off on the brush, but the, the brush is very dry and I'm just, uh, lightly flicking it over all the textured areas and the heavy gesso 
sticks to the top of the texture and makes it look even more textury because textury is a word, right? Texturized, textured, uh, you know what I'm saying. So it just kind of brings everything out when you have something that's very bumpy. And, uh, oh yeah, trimming off a few of the little bits and bobs that are hanging over the edge, not a problem. And number eight is to finish with a border or frame of your choice. And I didn't want to do anything real crazy, so I decided to just take my black ink pad and just go around the edges and um, kind of frame it in that way. I didn't want anything that was too obtrusive, but I do think that it helped to bring everything in and bring everything together by doing a little bit of black ink around the edge. So that is my page for the month for Mission Inspiration. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.